show the Azim and respect to the day of Ashura because of the martyrdom of Hussein radiallahu anhu. So how can we attribute a fadila to something which is going to happen half a century later? Umar radiallahu anhu was martyred. Tell me the day he was martyred. Uthman was martyred. Tell me the day he was martyred. Ali was martyred. Tell me when he was martyred. Because success is not what we see. Success is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. This was the ultimate form of sacrifice. Okay, whatever happens, we cannot go against the Amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever spends lavishly on his family on the day of Ashura, Allah will spend on him for the whole year. If I'm alive to the next year, I'm definitely, definitely going to fast on the ninth as well. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi wahdah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'da. Amma ba'du fa'udu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. إن عدة شهور عند الله اثنا عشر شهرا في كتاب الله يوم خلق السماوات والأرض وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من وسع على عياله يوم عاشورا وسع الله عليه سائر سنته وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وقال عن أبي قذاد رضي الله عنه قال إن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم سئل عن صيام يوم عاشورة فقال يكفر السنة الماضية أو كما قال صلى الله عليه وسلم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لسان يفقه قولي ثم أما بعد Honorable and respected brothers and elders We've just entered into the year 1440 according to the Islamic calendar Jodha Sojalis 1440 from a Muslim point of view, Alhamdulillah, Muharram belongs to Allah, January also belongs to Allah, Dhul Hijjah belongs to Allah, December belongs to Allah. So it's not an issue of that's ours, but that's not ours. They both belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah owns the lunar calendar, He owns also the solar calendar. However, what it is, is that we know that in the Islamic calendar, how the inception, how it began, it began with Qurbani and Mujahada. When the Muslims, they were going through a lot of difficulty, a lot of taqlif in, in Makkah al-Mugarramah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down wahi and revelation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ordering them to leave their homes and make hijrah from Makkah to Medina. And then they made Medina al Manawara their home and they made that the place from where Islam spread to the four corners of the world. Makkah al Mukarramah, the Muslims would never have left. It was the hukum and command of Allah, so they left. This making hijrah, this going from leaving, our Islamic calendar starts on the basis of, of, of sacrifice and taqlif and difficulty. If you look at not, not why the Islamic calendar started, but from this moment onwards, this is when we class year one in the Islamic calendar. Okay, they didn't make hijrah in Muharram. They made hijrah after that, but the reason why we start our calendar from this particular occasion was because it was a momentous occasion. That people left their homes for the sake of deen. People left their homes for the sake of Islam. People left their homes to bring and raise up the kalima la ilaha illallah. And we base our beginning on that. So we can always remind ourselves that Islam was based on qurbani and sacrifice. Okay? Now basically it's like this. Even in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he, in the time of Jahiliyyah, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she mentioned that كان يوم عشرة تصوم قريش في الجاهلية. It was actually the, the practice of the Quraysh that they would also fast in the, on the day of Ashura, even in the time of Jahiliyyah. And then he mentions that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وكان يصومه فلما وكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصومه He, peace be upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam His Mubarak practice was he would also fast on the day of Ashura on the, on the 10th of Muharram When he came to Medina al Marwa he mentions فلما قدم المدينة صام وأمر بالسيام He would also fast and also encourage others to fast as well فلما نزل رمضان But then a time came when Ramadan became Fard Ramadan Farida. Ramadan then took precedence because it was a fard and a compulsory act over the Muslims. Then what happened was, وَطَرَكَ Ashura. He then, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, did not, he left fasting on the, he left the Ashura for the reason being that it's no longer a fard. And he said, فَكَانَ مَنْ شَاءَ صَمُ وَمَنْ شَاءَ لَمْ يَصُمْهُ Whoever now wants to fast, they may fast. Whoever does not want to fast, they don't have to fast. It was left as an optional thing in the Ummah. But in the time of Jahiliyyah, the, the Arabs used to do it. He sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to do it. And he used to encourage others to do it as well. But when Ramadan came, then afterwards it, he left it. In terms of making it compulsory on the people, it was optional. Okay, you do or don't, it's okay. But Ramadan you have to do. Nevertheless, what happened was is that a time came, this was to the latter part, the yani, akhir part of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's life. He noticed that the Yahud of Medina would specifically fast on this particular day. 
So Aisha radiallahu anha, I beg your pardon, Abu Musa Ash'ari radiallahu ta'ala anha, anhu, he mentions that it was the people of Khaybar. The people of Khaybar, they used to fast on this particular day, on the day of Ashura. They used to make it an Eid. They, the women would dress up in, in jewelry and garments and make it a momentous occasion. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina, he found that the Yahud would fast on this particular day. So the riwayat mentions, فَسُؤِلُوا عَنْ ذَلِكَ They were questioning, it's exactly, why do you fast on this particular day? Why do you fast, excuse me, on the 10th of Muharram? And they said, فَقَالُوا هَذَا الْيَوْمْ الَّذِي أَظْهَرَ اللَّهُ فِيهِ مُوسَى عَلَى فِرْعَونَ وَنَحْنُ نَصُومُهُ تَعَظِيمًا لَهُ this was that particular day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He gave defeat. He gave success to Musa, defeat to Fir'aun, and we fast in respect and reverence for that particular day. This is what the answer which they gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, نَحْنُ أَوْلَى بِمُوسَى مِنْكُمْ We actually are more deserving of Musa than you because we're Muslims. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all prophets, we, they're all brothers. So he said, we're more worthy of Musa than you are. وَأَمَرَ بِسِيَامِهِ Then he said to the Sahaba, no, you should fast on this day. But then he mentions, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in another particular hadith, Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu says, mentions this hadith, and he said, لَإِنْ بَقِيتُ إِلَىٰ قَابِلْ لَأَسُومَنَّ تَاسِعَ but if I am alive in the next to the next year, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to just fast on the 10th only. He mentioned, I'm going to fast also on the 9th as well. I'm going to add additional day. Why? It's because he sallallahu alayhi wa did not like for the fact that we resemble people of other madhahib in terms of our religious practices. Let me say that again. He did not want for Muslim believers, mawahidun, people who believe in Allah, to resemble those individuals who are from another faith. If you look into the history of the Adhan, some Sahaba gave the opinion, okay, why don't we uh, you know, light a fire like the Majus or, or blow a trumpet like the Yahud or ring a bell like the Nasara? And he sallallahu alayhi wa did not like any of those opinions because it resembled too much the people of other faiths. So whether they are lighting a fire, saying, uh, using a trumpet, ringing a bell, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not like to resemble them in any such way when it came to the issue of ibadah. So he said, if I'm alive to the next year, I'm going to fast the ninth. Hopefully from just these small few riwayat and these hadith, I've impressed upon you this much that the day of Ashura was something that was celebrated in the time Jahiliyyah before even the Prophet ﷺ even left Medina. And when he came to Medina, he saw the Yahud fasting on that day, ta'adheeman lahu, in respect of that day because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave success to Musa salam. So then he said to the, the Sahaba, you should fast as well. We're more deserving of Musa than them. So fast. I'm going to add another day. I'm going to fast on the ninth. There's another particular hadith where he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions that, that you, uh, الْيَهُودِ Be different from the Yahud. صُومُ قَبْلَهُ يَوْمًا أَوْ بَعْدَهُ يَوْمًا Either fast the day before or after, but don't resemble the Yahud. This particular hadith has got some kalam in the sun. It's not, I wouldn't say it's as authentic as the other ones. The more preferred opinion, I'll, let's break it down. So you have four opinions here. You fast 9-10. 10 and 11, just 10, or 9, 10 and 11. Does everyone understand that? So there's four possible combinations. 9 and 11, we, not, 9 and 10, I beg your pardon. This is referred to as what we refer to as a sunnah. Even the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa did not fast it. But he said, لَإِن بَقِيتُ لَا قَابِلِ If I'm alive to the next year, لَأَصُومَنَّ I'm definitely, definitely going to fast on the 9th as well. So we class that as a sunnah now. But because there is this light that, you know, that comes, hold on a second, but he mentioned in that hadith, before a day, after a day, so on. This hadith, as I mentioned, is not as authentic. So that's why the ulama say it's permissible, jais, but it's better for the 9th and 10th. Does everyone understand that now? Then there's the 10th alone, but because he said khalif al-Yahud, be different from the, the Jewish people. That's why ulama say that it's makru and dislike just to fast on this day. But better than that is that we take into consideration the 9th, 10th and 11th and fast all three if we possibly can, that's even more. Noor ala noor. But if you fast the 9th and 10th, alhamdulillah, that's according to the sunnah, absolutely fine. If you fast an additional day, it will be a non-obligatory nafil, nafila, absolutely all and good. Point of mentioning is this, I have full respect and utmost respect for the family of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Ahlul Bayt are the most honored and revered people in our eyes. We love them, we respect them, we honor them, we, we you know, we, 
we study their seerah with great passion, love and desire. But I ask a question, is the day of Ashura, do we give it ta'zeeb and respect because of the martyrdom of Hussein radiallahu anhu? And the answer to that simply is no. It's got no basis. Now, some people like to get all emotional and they like to bring in emotion and say, but he's the grandson of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and how could you not let... Brother, I understand where your emotion's coming from. I feel pain, I feel sadness. At the extent which I've studied the incident of Karbala, it's painful to read how brutally, how, mass- how they were massacred and, 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 and Allahu Akbar, how they were treated so harshly by the people who were the believers, Allahu Akbar. But let's not get tied up into emotion. Let's be rational. You know, let's, let's think Tande the Maqisad. And think to ourselves, do we show the azim and respect to the day of Ashura because of the martyrdom of Hussein radiallahu anhu? You ask any general person from the subcontinent, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, generally the same. You ask them, why do you fast on the 10th of Muharram? Why sahab? Day of Karbala. That's not nothing to do with it. Because the Prophet sallallahu used to fast. Even in the time of Jahiliyyah, the Jah- so the martyrdom of Hussein happened in, it was, if I'm not mistaken, 61, 62 Hijri. 50 years after the Prophet ﷺ passed away. So when is it, you know, whether it's 61 Hijri, 62, uh, then Allah forbid the date skips my mind. This happened so long after. So how can we attribute a fadila to something which is going to happen half a century later? Do you guys understand? I'm not a Nasibi. I'm not someone who hates the family of the Prophet. Ma'ad Allah. Thumma ma'ad Allah. We are people who of Tanda Damag who think rationally and think, hold on a second, let's give it its particular maqam. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were fast. Khair is done, that's it, it's the sunnah. But now to attribute extra things and say, oh, oh, it's because of this, it's because of the martyrdom. Now hold on a second, now we're going a bit too far. Because Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, after his demise, if you look at the Sahaba who were martyred, even before that, Jalla khair, let's look at who was the Sayyid, the leader of all the shuhada? Anyone? The greatest shaheed was who? Hamza radiallahu anhu, Hamza du asadullahi wa asad rasuli. One of the greatest shuhada of this ummah. I ask anyone, I'll pull out 50 quid from my pocket right now, tell me the day Hamza passed away. 50 quid is yours, 100 quid, but okay, 500 pounds is yours. Can't do it. Umar radiallahu anhu was martyred, tell me the day he was martyred. Uthman was martyred, tell me the day he was martyred. Ali was martyred, tell me when he was martyred. Hassan radiallahu anhu was poisoned, tell me the day when he passed away. How about the shuhada of Uhud? How about the shuhada of, for example, uh, uh, Hunayn? Uh, how about, the, for example, the martyrs of the likes of Bi'ri Mauna? The tragedy of Mauna, for example. Tariqh is full of zulm and oppression that has happened to Sahaba radiallahu anhu majma'in. And I understand and I fully lament and I feel sad and I feel to shed a tear when I read the story of Hussein radiallahu anhu because causing him taqlif would cause taqlif and difficulty to my Nabi. But I cannot attribute something falsely to the deen and say, it's because of this. I mean, I don't know how bad it is in, San, in, in Bangladesh, but I studied in Pakistan, right? So there what would happen is, is that people at shops would give out sharbat, ruwafza, you know, like these sorts of drinks. But that day, the family of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa didn't have water for three days. So we had given this to, to remind ourselves of the, of, the th- of the thirst he went through. We don't think along those same lines. Hussein radiallahu anhu, he stood for what was right and was haq. But was he ma'adullah na'uzbillah, was he unsuccessful? Was he not successful? No, he was successful. Why? Because he went from this dunya obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He went from this dunya in a situation in the condition of iman, where Allah was inshallah happy with him because he went obeying the command of Allah, implementing the deen of Allah, obeying the commands of Allah, praying, doing all the right things. His place in Jannah will inshallah be confirmed. Does everyone understand that? Where on the other side, Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, Shimr and so on, the people who were against him. Bazahir in dunya, they're successful because now they've got the position and authority. But by Allah, they will also become dis- disgraced in the dunya, they all became, and also in the akhirah. Because success is not what we see, success is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. This was the ultimate form of sacrifice. Okay, whatever happens, we cannot go against the Amr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Time for Salah comes and they are observing their Salah, arrows are fired on them. They did not even leave Salah in that condition. We're ready to leave Salah because of a customer. Because he ordered an extra large biryani, I've got to cook that. I've got to go and do a delivery, brother, there's 10 vindaloos on the side. Brother, this is, the, this is why we talk about these stories, to help reflect that, hold on a second. These are people that gave their lives. All he had to do was just take bay'ah and say, okay, I accept. Everyone would have been saved, but he stood for what was haq. What, can we not stand for what's haq? 
I'm not saying give our sacrifice in the same way because of that if we can compare. But this much we can do. Okay, when it comes time for salah, we pray our salah. When it comes time to do hajj, we do our hajj. Why do we lie in our businesses? Why do we do fraud? Why do we cheat? Come sick and bring our lives in accordance to deen. At least we can do that much. You see, that's the whole maqsad of remembering these incidents. So I mentioned, just to finish off, that this particular day, yes, Rasulullah was encouraged to fast. I encourage all the brothers to fast. Ninth and tenth, if you can do, if you can add a day, bismillah. If you can't, then just maybe ninth and tenth, if, if work gives you, if you can manage it, inshallah. There's one more hadith which I'll mention. There are so many baseless things that, that you, I heard, honestly. You know, in, in Pakistan, I heard so many ajeeb things. Like, for example, if you put surma in your eyes, your eyes will never get ill. If you have a bath, you'll never get ill. And all this stuff, wallahi, absolutely baseless. Baseless. And like for example, Ibrahim was fr- taken out of the fire on Muharram and Nuh his kashti was on Judi on the 10th of Muharram. Qiyamah will happen on the 10th of Muharram. This is all false. All false. The only thing we can say is what I've already said. There's so many more things. One thing I will say is that there is one hadith which is weak in its chain. Okay, man wasa'a ala iyalihi yawma ashura. Wasa'a Allahu alihi sa'ida sanatihi. That's the hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever spends lavishly on his family on the day of Ashura, Allah will spend on him for the whole year. This is a weak hadith. It's not, it's not false, but this is weak in its nature. So the most we can say is jais to do something for the family, and that's really just about it. But to give away the deg of halva, and puriyan, kunde, nayaz, and biryani, and... But, this is, it's just absolutely baseless within the deen. And I asked my wife even, I said to her, why do people do this? She goes, but chalta hai, but lo kar the chal It's just started and people just follow. That's what happens because, achha lagta na, mashallah, deg, biryani, mashallah. Oh, chan hai jawal, kunde niyaz. So people don't even intervene and say, hold on a second, this is not even, you're taking it beyond what's allowed in Islam because now you're making it into an innovation. The most we can say was permissible, but you've gone so far and now people start regarding and un- attaching more importance to a day when it's not really that required. If anything, the day of Arafah we should actually observe more importance. Laylatul Qadr we should observe more importance. But khair, this inshallah, I hope this serves as a reminder for us all. Let me just make it clear, we're not against any of the incidents of the, of the Karbala and so on. There's a lot that needs to be mentioned, a lot of false fabricated things. We have love for the family of the Prophet ﷺ, but our love is, is not guided by aql is guided by naql. Aql is intelligence, naql is revelation. We go by what is written in the Quran and the Hadith. That's what we're muqallaf of. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq, the ability to practice, implement, and understand what's being said. And try to take good unto others, inshallah. Fast on the day, give your family what you can on the day, and try to do as much good as we possibly can. The best fast after the month of Ramadan undoubtedly is Muharram. Fast as much as we possibly can, if your siha gives the jaz and permission. If it doesn't, then chalo, well, let's not attribute anything false to the day. Because just as how sinning in certain occasions of the year is more, these are one of those months which is the Arba'atun Hurum, the sacred month. So we should try to lessen the haram, lessen the sins, lessen the bad which we do. Inshallah, hopefully this will be sufficient. Allah give us tawfiq. Subhanallah, wa bihamdi, subhanakallahumma, wa bihamdi, ganashadu la ilaha illa anta nastakhfaratu